a century, 100 miles. It's a landmark distance to all cyclists, no matter how experienced or inexperienced they are. Once you see that clock tick over to 100 miles, it gives a feeling of accomplishment to us all. Yeah, it's the cyclist's equivalent of the marathon for runners. Now, it's a distance that's daunting, but with the right preparation, both mentally and physically, it's eminently achievable. But the best thing is, you can really impress your mates as well. Yeah, but how do you do it and where do you do it? Well, we are about to tell you. We certainly are. You should be able to ride 100 miles almost anywhere where there are roads or tracks. Some will be really difficult, others beautiful. But the bottom line is, you should be able to ride 100 miles from your doorstep. Yeah, but is that really what you want to do? Especially if this is going to be your first ever 100 mile ride. After all, if we go back to our runner analogy, how many first time marathon runners do it from their doorstep? Not many, we'd imagine. No, what you want is an organised event. One where you'll be riding along with like-minded people on a safe but relatively demanding route that's clearly marked out, that's peppered with feed stations to help you get topped up along the way. But with so many events to choose from these days, how do you make sure that you enter the right one for you? Well, if there's one thing that separates a few from the rest, it's closed roads. There's nothing better than feeling like a pro for a day and not having to worry about traffic as well as the pain that you're experiencing in your legs. Now, the first really important step is choosing, selecting and entering the event of your choice because that ultimately is your end goal and everything preceding that is done with your event in mind. So, once you have entered your event, what do you do next? Well, hopefully you have been reasonably organised and given yourself at least a couple of months with which to prepare. Then with your training, it's really all about gradually increasing the intensity or duration or frequency of your riding as you come up towards the big day itself. Now, it's a good idea if you're very new to cycling to spend the first few weeks of your training getting comfortable on your bike and getting confident on your bike out on the open road. And also make sure you increase your training gradually so you get a training effect, but importantly, making sure you get plenty of rest so your body has time to make those training adaptations. Now, the likelihood is that you're not going to have an enormous amount of time to set aside and go out on your bike, but you needn't worry. We're going to go back to the runner's analogy one more time. Very few first-time marathon runners will do a full 26 miles in training before the day itself. No, it's all about the consistency of your riding and ensuring that you incrementally increase the stress levels on your body as the weeks progress. Now, get yourself a cycle computer, measure your speed, your mileage, and you'll be amazed at the kind of improvements you make in only a very short space of time. Now, aim to ride three or four times per week. Midweek, do two shorter, intenser rides, leaving you time at the weekend to do your longer ones. Now, when you are creating your training plan, it's a good idea to work your way back from the date itself. And with a couple of weeks to go, try and do an 80 mile ride in preparation where you replicate the conditions that you have on the day, i.e. the same type of terrain, eating and drinking the food that you plan to have on the day itself. Now, if you are capable of doing that 80 miles, then almost undoubtedly, you will be able to complete the century on the day. What with that extra adrenaline going through your body and the encouragement for having other riders around you, not to mention the fact that when you're slipstreaming behind other riders, you're saving loads of energy. Yeah, in fact, riding with others is a great way of preparing for these events. First stop, it'll make the time pass more quickly. And secondly, if you arrange to meet somebody, you're far more likely to go outside the front door in the first place and do the training. And thirdly, if you ride with others who are just a little bit better than you, they'll push you that little bit further. Is that why you're riding with me? Yeah. Fans. Now, before we conclude this video, there is one last very important tip, and that is that you should have all your hard work done on the bike with one week still remaining to the event. That last seven days should just be about absorbing the training you've done and freshening up 
for the day itself. In fact, one of the worst things you can do is panic train over those last few days, leaving you feeling fatigued and tired when it matters most. Some top advice there, Dan. But for how to ride further, and that tips on that very subject, how about clicking just up here? And for how to increase your average speed, how about clicking just down there? And to subscribe to GCN, there will be loads more tips coming your way over the next weeks, months, and years, hopefully. Just click on the globe. And don't forget to share and like this video too.